I can never get those, and that's the game I want to play. So I've been working on just simple Americanas, yeah. Camorras, and side control. And it's just, it, like right now, I, I want to do comedy part-time, but I want to do jiu-jitsu full-time. Yeah, that, that's Even though I, I suck at it. it I don't matter. give a fuck. We were just talking about recuperation. Yeah. And we were talking about how I want to lift twice a week and then go to jiu-jitsu three times a week. But I can't do it. Like my goal, the, my goal was to hit five classes one week, and I hit four. Like but I, that's fine. You know what the goal should be? To have as many classes as you can and still do your best at them. Like even when I train, you know, twice a day, six, seven days a week, by the sixth or seventh day, I'm not getting really good training because my body's falling apart. I'm, I'm 41 as well. You know what I mean? I'm getting up there in age. I don't recover like I used to. I'm just a little bit retarded. If I don't train twice a day, I lose my mind. So like it's the lesser of two evils. I, I'm a big believer in like destroying your body to fix your mind. If you've ever heard that, that saying before. You know, and when I'm destroying my body, I have no stress. I'm happy as can be. All the endorphins come out. I leave that room feeling great. Then I can go deal with all the bullshit I have to deal with afterwards, you know? You know, it was really impressive. What really impressed me about you was a couple of years ago on the church when I had the previous podcast, I don't know, me and Lee were talking about something. And I did about 20 minutes about my day. Do you remember that podcast? I go, let me tell you what. There was a couple of podcasts. No, but that was like... I wanted people to understand. Like, people think that you just go up on stage at 8 o'clock at night and people fall down laughing right. and you walk off the stage and people throw coke at you. <laughs> this is what people think. And you go into the green room and somebody's sucking your dick and all day you sleep and you party, you know. And people have no idea. When you get to a certain level, like, okay, we see Guns N' Roses now, all right? Guns N' Roses is not partying no more. They're not partying. They're clean and sober. They're old, yeah. and, you know. So what do they do now? If you talk to them, like I don't talk to them, but if you look into their day, I guarantee you all five of them are working out. I know Duff goes, he's a fucking kickboxer. He trains really? with fucking crazy man. Huh. When Duff, for Duff to get healed, when his fucking liver blew up or whatever <laughs> ruptured from drinking, he went to the, one of the best, Benny the Jet. Okay. So he trains at Benny the Jet when he's in town. And I think he takes them on the road, on the tours. That's cool. I would, to too. train them. I would, too. So, you know, people think, like a guy like you walk in, you got a nice build, you know, you're healthy, you're strong. They think you just pull up with your Maserati, go in, beat up three people, no. and get back in your car and go home. Tell me about your day. Tell me about your supplement intake. Right. So these people know the road to a champion. Well... My day is seven days a week, but that doesn't mean I actually do it seven days a week. You know, I do have businesses that I run and whatnot. So I plan on training two, three times a day, every single day, seven days a week. And when people ask me how much I train, I tell them I train every day. But life happens sometimes, and I don't actually train on those days. I just never plan on not training for a day. You know, like I'm leaving for Worlds on Thursday, so I took off today and tomorrow to let my body recover. Okay? I still tell people I train every day, but I didn't train today, and I'm not training tomorrow. But when I'm healthy, which as you get older, that's half the battle, right? I have, you know, two blown out knees, two herniated discs in my back, you know. When I'm healthy and the weather's permitting, my day starts off, I get up every morning and I go do a Murph, okay? Mile run with a 20-pound weighted vest, 300 squats, 200 push-ups, 100 pull-ups, then another mile run. Now, before okay. this, is there any coffee, any breakfast? Oh, yeah, I'm up any at 4. Yeah, right. Any protein 4 shakes? 4.30 in the morning, I get up. Between 4.30 and 5.30 is like my favorite hour of the day. The world is still asleep. I have my coffee, check my emails, look at jujitsu shit on Instagram and stuff like that, and just get myself mentally prepared for the day. I take a whole bunch of supplements, everything from, you know, magnesium, salt. I take, um, uh, what, is, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm having a brain fart at the moment. I'll take uh, a peptide called BPC-157, which fixes your, it actually regrows muscle fibers, tendons, and ligaments. So I take those for my knees and my elbows, my tendonitis and shit like that. I take Harderine, which is uh, another peptide that helps with your uh, lung capacity and your endurance. I do a lot of breath work, which, you know, we've done together. And if I, if you don't mind me discussing that no. briefly. So, you know, as I mentioned, I, I do breath work with a girl named Gabriella Borges. She is fucking awesome. Awesome. You want to go tomorrow and see her? I would if, if she's available. I'd love. I gotta ask get her, you in there. I'll know, ask you. And tomorrow we'll go. we got nothing. So. She is amazing. I met her just like I met her through jujitsu. Okay, we started bartering. So I was teaching her and her awesome daughter Giselle. I was teaching them group jujitsu lessons, and they were teaching me breathwork lessons. 
I went there because I wanted to have, you know, better breathing. I still compete with guys sometimes that are 25. I'm 41, and they have endless gas tanks. So I'm on my way there. I'm like, I got this breathwork coach. This is going to be great. I think I'm going to go do some meditative breathing with some nice music and, like, relax and everything. That was, like, the fucking polar opposite of what we did. I walk in there. She's like, I walk in there. She's got Metallica blasting. She's making me do these... Uh, diaphragm expansion exercises with like a 40 pound kettlebell on my stomach oh my i'm like hyperventilating she's like we have three minutes left and you know when you go do something and like halfway through in your mind you're like i don't want to be here right now like i just yeah, want to leave but every I can't. day <laughs> well, well yeah well, that's how it was but through that it completely changed my life not just for endurance that was actually probably the littlest piece that i took out of it but you know i, I had really bad anxiety and depression that fixed it dramatically you know, you were talking about, you know, fight or flight, your sympathetic nervous system. When for people that don't know what that is, it's like if someone opens this door and jumps out with a knife, we're going to go <gasps> and stop breathing and hold our breath and our heart rate goes up and your pupils dilate and you freeze. And that's your body. And that's OK. That's when your body's telling you get the fuck out of here. You're in trouble. But that happens too often in people. OK. And by by activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is pretty much the opposite, that's your body telling you chill out, calm down. You're going to be fine. And the only way to activate is by breathing. So, you know, through that, everything, not just jujitsu or just, just life. Life got better, you know, and I do 20, 30 minutes worth of breath work a day. I just add it to my everyday routine. It's probably the best 20, 30 minutes uh, that I have every day. And now she's working with Bass Rutan. Um, she's a certified, actual certified breath work instructor under Dr. Belisa. And the cool thing is you have guys now like Wim Hof, right, that's bringing a lot of attention to breath work. But all these people show you really cool shit, but they don't actually teach you how to breathe. Yeah. You can imitate what they're doing, but most people, when they breathe or they're out of breath, they take these big, huge breaths with their shoulders and they fill up their lungs up here, right? So, yeah, if you think about it, right, your lungs are shaped like two teardrops or two pairs like this. The parts that are up by your shoulders, they're the smallest part. So when people are breathing so much to, to fill up this much of your lungs and not this, that's when you start gasping for it, <gasps> right? Because you're, you're becoming oxygen starved because you're only getting this little bit. When you breathe out of your belly, not only does your diaphragm grow and your lungs grow because they're muscles, all right? But that's when you can slow down everything, control your, your breathing, control your nervous system. And in studies that Wim Hof has done, they literally gave like him and his entire team like pneumonia, uh, they gave it to him first and he wouldn't get sick like he just didn't get sick they thought it was a fluke so they took like 10 of his they took like 10 of his students it might not be pneumonia it was a flu or but regardless whatever it is they gave like 10 of his pupils fucking pneumonia and none of them got sick and this is like a documented study you can google it it's, it's amazing so and he swears that you can actually control your body's own immune system by breathing 